Hey guys, it's Monday. I'm whispering because Milton's still sleeping, but I'm about to head out. It's not raining, I think. Um, I'm gonna take you with me to work. It's just a typical day as a university teacher. So right now it's about seven, I think it's 7.10. So I'm gonna leave, go to the Metro, and then go to school. Let's go. I'm home now it's 10 minutes to 5 p.m. so now I'm home and I can make dinner I'm probably gonna have a snack first and then dinner um, and do some grading because that's what I have on my list for today so that's my day from I leave the house at about 7 7 15 depending on the day and I get home around 
5. Some days, depending on the metro and bus, could be as early as 4.30. Um, but yeah, depends on the day. Hey guys, it's me, Mia. I'm back here today to talk about finding a job in China and frequently asked questions about working in China. As most of you know, I have been living in China for about four years, teaching consistently um, for those four years. Previously, I was studying abroad here, but then I was like back and forth before I finished my degree. So that was like years ago. The first time I came to China, was about eight years ago dang yeah i was a baby <laughs> so yeah the first time i came to china was on a trip with my university for the summer for about a month and a half and then i loved it came back for a semester to study the language and then i went back to the states finished up my degree and then now i have been here teaching for the past four years Two of those years, I lived in Guilin in Guangxi province, and now I'm currently living in Guangzhou in Guangdong province. So I've only been living in the south, so things that happen up north could be totally different. And I don't know because I've never lived there. I visited, but I've never lived or taught in the north. So I don't know what to say. Also, I do wanna say that most of my experience is about universities because that's where I've exclusively worked for the past four years is at universities here in China um, so obviously I'm gonna know the most about working at a university if you have any extra questions you can ask me um, whereas I am gonna talk about the other kinds of schools and some of them I have not personally worked at I had to ask some of my friends um, or other people I knew that worked at these other kinds of schools but yeah most of my knowledge is gonna be on universities and training centers actually um, I do have a lot of friends that work there so let's get into it so the first question I have is what's the differences between these schools right teaching in China is teaching in China yeah not really um, so the main four schools I'm going to talk about is universities, like I said, training centers, kindergartens, and public schools. Oh wait, and international schools, so five. Five different kinds of schools. So the first one I'm just going to jump off and talk about is universities. So if you look online, a lot of people say, oh, universities are the worst because the salary is so low, but I think there are so many other benefits to working at a university um, besides salary. If you just want a high salary and you don't care about your workload, maybe you shouldn't work at a university then. If you really want just a lot of money, then try to find another job. That's what I'd say. However, if money isn't your main focus, although you still can focus on money in university because you have so much spare time like you can make youtube videos <laughs> you can do other things that could possibly get you money as well so obviously one of the main benefits of working at a university is going to be the low work hours both of my universities that i worked at have been different kind of a different layout when i worked in guilin i think i worked about four days a week um monday I think my day off changed every semester, but I worked about four days a week and they were all half days. So maybe 8.30 to noon. Um, maybe every now and then I would work in afternoon, but it wouldn't be that bad. It wasn't like every semester I would work afternoons or I would only work the afternoons. I would have mornings off. So that wasn't too bad. Um, like I said, four days a week, you have a three-day weekend. If you have Friday or Monday off, there's the waking up early, which is usually common for university classes, having to wake up early. Morning classes are typical. Anyway, so about the low hours with university, it's usually very low. I want to say both of my contracts have like a maximum of like 16 teaching hours a week, while both uh, places I worked at did not have office hours so some of you might think freedom is good other people freedom are bad is bad <laughs> just to let you know that's something to expect 
However, like I said, every university is going to be different. Even though I'm in Guangzhou, another university in Guangzhou might have a totally different schedule, totally different expectations and requirements. So I'm just telling you my experience, okay? The teachers who teach in the undergraduate department, they are much more structured. They have books for every class, they have a curriculum, and they have to discuss with each other if they share a course about the exam they want to give, and it has to be the same. So again, everyone is different depending on your department, your university, everything. Another thing to expect at a university is they're going to provide you with an apartment, most likely, on campus. Um, this can be very helpful if you just want to walk to class, you don't have to wake up as early, you can go home during lunch break, it's very convenient. However, there are some negatives to living on campus. I didn't like always running into my students if I'm just running to the store for milk or something like that. Um, or the environment, again, is orientated towards young students. So there might not be as many resources. For example, my university here, there wasn't a good market nearby. There was a supermarket on campus, but it didn't have so many things in terms of fresh produce and stuff like that. So for us adults who were cooking, we had to walk a little way, a long way to the market and get what we needed. So I am happier living off campus. If you do live off campus, your university should provide you with a stipend. Obviously it's gonna differ depending on your university, depending on where you live, the city. Um, so I would just say try to fight for as much rent money as you can. Before our stipend was lower and me and a lot of the other teachers, maybe there's only four of us, who live off campus, we fought with our department and eventually we got our rent money raised. So it was like getting a raise, whereas the people who live on campus, they didn't get more money for anything, but we got more rent money. Um, so that was very helpful. Keep in mind your rent money probably isn't going to cover your entire rent. If there's somewhere that covers your entire rent, the money they give you a month, congratulations. The only thing is if you live with other people, if you have roommates, sure you can find a good apartment that you can both pay for with the money that your university gives you. But if you are living alone, like one of my friends, he's an older guy, he wants to live alone, he has a dog, he doesn't want to live on campus, um, obviously the money that our university gives is not going to fully cover it, but it can cover probably 75% of your rent. All you need to do is know where to go for a good apartment and be willing to travel. And again, weigh the pros and cons of living on campus and off campus. It's all up to you. Also, I wanted to say about on-campus housing, it can be terrible. Um, my university in Guilin, I loved living on campus. It was very convenient. There was everything nearby. All of the teachers lived on campus as well, so we were all next to each other. That was fun. My apartment was huge, big bedroom, big living room, two balconies, nice kitchen. Never did I feel cramped. Then when I saw the apartment here, uh, that's when I said, maybe I don't want to live on campus. The kitchen was tiny, and if you know me, I love cooking, so that was a big no-no. And the bedroom was small. There was going to be two of us living there, so I was like, ah, this is really cramped, really cramped. And the bathroom was small too, so that's why we ended up moving off campus in the first place, and now we moved again. But again, it's really up to you. If you think, oh, it's not bad, I'm just gonna be here for a year, I don't want to go and find a new apartment. A lot of people think it's hard to find new apartments or find an apartment in China, and it is. Um, if you don't wanna deal with that, then live on campus. Um, obviously with the schedule, you get weekends off. Do I need to even say that? No. Um, with time off, obviously we, we don't need to work any kind of weekend time or holiday time. What's great at universities is you have long winter and summer breaks um, because of everyone does it's a holiday right you also get every holiday off and some universities will even give you Christmas off the place I work now will give us Christmas Day and the day after Christmas off which I really wish it was Christmas Eve and Christmas Day but 
Beggars can be choosers. I'm happy I get two days off for Christmas no matter what day of the week they are. That's great. My old university did not do that. I had, I have gone to school on Christmas day. Although was it a more fun day? Sure. But I have taught on Christmas day. Um, just keep that in mind. But during the winter and summer, you should get paid. It, um, summer will depend if you're renewing or not. But winter, for example, let's say classes go until mid-January. And then they don't start up until March 1st. Which depends on Chinese New Year. But that has happened where I haven't worked a day in February. But I will still get my salary in February for February. Just like as if I worked. So that's a big bonus working at a university. They will give you money no matter what. Um, and then if you renew the contract, usually we don't work a day in August, yet we will get a salary for August if you are renewing, if that's during your break. If you stop working there, like when I moved jobs, I stopped working and then I didn't get an August salary and that was actually really hard for me that summer. All right, let's talk about the cons of working at a university. Number one, you can have very large class sizes. I've had classes up to 60 students for speaking and listening. How can I teach speaking and listening class to 60 students in an hour and a half? How can I monitor their level, make sure they're improving, even know their name? I find that difficult. Again, it depends on the course usually, your university, blah, blah, blah. I've had smaller classes like 20, so it really just depends, I think, on the university and that certain semester. Number two of cons, you might have some on-campus events. So for example, English Corner. At my old university, we had English Corner, I think you probably did it every three weeks or so, not every week. However, we would get an extra payment just for going to English Corner. So even though we had to do it, we had no choice, but they would give us extra money. Now we did English Corner this semester. I didn't have to do it, but other teachers did it. They didn't get extra money for it, but they did have to do it. So it depends on your university. Also things like being a judge in speech contests. I did that also at my old university and we did get extra money for that. I haven't done it at this university yet, but just know you might be asked to do those kinds of things. Another con, it can be both. So with your students, you're probably not going to get all students who love English and just want to learn so much from you because you're such a smart foreigner. No. From my experience, it really depends on their major. So some people are really interested in English, they really like it, they are very interested in foreign culture, they want to learn more, so they are more active. Whereas you have a lot of boys, I found it to be mostly boy students, but a lot of students, maybe engineering majors, mathematics, those kinds of students who don't care about English, they don't want to learn English, they don't think they need to learn English, but they are forced to be in your class. So you have to deal with that. Another thing is with classroom management is cell phone usage obviously is going to be the highest in university students, not only social media, but all kinds of usage that you're not gonna find with younger students. So that's another thing to worry about. Now for the salary. You have to keep in mind what city you're going to. Cause smaller cities are going to be on the lower end, bigger cities are gonna be on the higher end. Okay, so for the lowish end for a university, I would say about 8000 a month. This is without anything, rent money, any extra money they might give you. Base, 8000 Again, small cities, very small cities. Now for larger cities, you can get upwards even to 16000 And I know a lot of you say, what university can pay you that much? Um, I have had friends who have gone that much. However, with a higher salary, you get that with a higher degree. I am not making 16,000. However, I have friends with master's degrees, with PhDs. They get a certain extra amount of money because they have higher degrees. So if you just have a bachelor's, you're probably not going to find a job at a university that's gonna pay you 16,000, okay?
Hey guys, I realize that this video is already pretty long, so I'm going to end it here and put all the other information about other schools in a part two. So if you have any question regarding university jobs, leave them in the comments below. And if you are curious about teaching at other schools in China, please watch part two. Thanks. Bye.